I was going to make this thrilling and exciting, but we'll just have to go with short. A couple of weeks ago, I did a video on how to do repairing of electronic equipment. But I got asked a few questions like, how can you tell what a component is? I mentioned that coils or inductors are something you have to be really, really quite wary of. And so I thought I'd just show you on here. This is the Farnell catalogue. This is a big distributor in the UK that have been doing it for 80 years. Not a sponsor, but happens to be that they've got a wide range. And they supply everybody from manufacturers right all the way through to just repair agents and whatever. So if, you've, if you want something and it's generic, you go to Farnell for it. And uh, yeah, it's a very good catalogue as you can see here. But what I'm looking at here is these are all inductors or coils. That one's a fairly obvious looking one, and it's a toroidal coil. And you can see here, there's hundreds of them. But when you see a coil like this, with thick wire and sticky out bits, regard it as something that's worth being very careful about. Because invariably, they will be being used for high voltages and or high currents. And the sort of things that they're going to be used in, they could be used in switch over power supplies, they could be used in, depending on the actual physical size of them, but these ones are big. They could be being used in RF circuitry. Now, microwave ovens are RF circuitry. They have things like this in them, big things. So be careful, is what I'm saying. The other thing is the physical size of coils. Because of the way they're constructed, they are heavy very often. And that means that when they're soldered into boards, it's always, if you're going to replace one, always make sure you do the appropriate lead bending when you solder it in. Because otherwise, if you just put the lead straight through and solder it, what you'll end up with is something that will, at some point, fall out under the weight of gravity if it's not sitting on its legs. It's just not good when that happens. If it's on top of the board, it will push itself down and possibly lift the tracks. If it's underneath the board, it will pull itself out and drop. I've seen that many times. Let's take a quick look at this other sort of toroidal here. This one is a different shape, possibly different sizes. And you can see here, the way they package them can be different. So primarily it's just a coil around a bit of metal, but sometimes they've got plastic covers on them. Sometimes they have got metal covers on them, sort of screen covers. And uh, you, know, you never really know what you're gonna get. So what you have to do is, if you see something you don't recognize, you have to look at it and say, oh, What's that say in the circuit diagram? If it says L25, you know it's a coil. And that's the only way of doing it. See, look, they are all slightly different. There's, there is no standard to them, other than the fact that within a manufacturer there's a standard, but you never know what you're gonna see. These ones are interesting because these are like surface mount ones. They don't look like coils at all. In fact, if anything, they look like chips. They look like resistors or capacitors. And if you saw them on a board, you wouldn't know what they were without the demarcation on the board. If it doesn't say it's a coil, why would you think it was? I mean, it's just, with real experience of a particular product, you'd know, but just as a general engineer, you wouldn't. And these ones are even more confusing. Look at this one. That looks like a resistor. And when you get onto here, you find that there's hundreds and hundreds of resistors looking inductors. They are ri ridiculously similar. I mean, some of them are fairly obvious. Like that one had coils that are visible. Yeah, okay, that's fine. But then when we scroll further down, you'll see that there's other ones that they just look like resistors. And, you know, that looks like, a, that looks like an old resistor from the old days. But uh, here we go. Let's, let's scroll down a bit more. Look at these. Uh, first glance, second glance. You're going to think it's a resistor. It's not going to be obvious unless you know its position in the circuit. And it's the sort of thing... That can... Now these, these are quite interesting. You've got a few more of those type there, and you've got a few more of these funny resistor-looking ones, you know, the old-fashioned resistor one. But you know, they're, they're various sizes, they're various shapes, various colours, and then none of them really look like what they are. They look like they could be anything. I mean, that looks like cotton reel gone wrong. So, you know, You've just got to be aware that what you're looking for. And the, these ones are the ones that really confuse people because these ones are coils, as you can see here, but they're quite often wrapped in what you might call a plastic case or a can. And 
look, it looks like a capacitor. If you don't know, that looks like a capacitor. That one definitely looks like a capacitor. And what it is is just that with a, with a sleeve over it. But, you know, they are done like that for a reason. Let that reason be loved. No, I don't know what the reason is. It's because it's convenient, it's protection, it will keep the thing working presumably longer than it would otherwise. But, you know, it's one of those things that's really confusing. So don't let yourself get confused. But anyway, that's enough of that one. And now we go on to these ones, which are air coil inductors. They are quite nice, but they are literally looking just like bits of wire. They are bits of wire. This is all it is. Look, it's bits of wire coiled. So you can actually make those sort of things by wrapping a bit of wire around a pen. And some circuits do call for that. On the other hand, if you're going to make a product, you need to get them professionally made because it takes too long to do it by hand. Anyway, that's what they are. And they again come, some as they are like that, and some wrapped with plastic and stuff around them. So again, you don't really know what they are. And they can have single turns or they can be, they can be coupling ones where you've got two sets of turns, which is basically a transformer. You know, it varies. Anyway, I think that's enough of that. I think the case has been proved that you need to know what you're looking at and the only way to find out is to, well, is to study it. It could be anything when you're looking at it. So look at the circuit diagram and go from there.